Hello and welcome to TY Books. Today we have with us renowned author, producer and television presenter Richard Austin. His first novel, The Thursday Murder Club, was an international bestseller which was soon followed by the exponential success of his second novel, The Man Who Died Twice. His much awaited third novel, The Bullet That Missed, is scheduled to release in September 2022. I am Mr. Austin, welcome to TY Books. How are you doing? I'm really well. Thank you very much for for having me on. Much appreciated. It's a pleasure, sir. It's a pleasure. Um, so, sir, first things first. Um, the four main characters in your first novel, that is the Thursday Murder Club, they are quite an unlikely mix. Um, mm. They are all roughly 80 years old. Then one was a spy, one was a nurse. There's a psychiatrist and a trade union official. Yeah. Um, so, where did the inspiration for such characters and story come from? And even more importantly, why did you write the book over 18 months in secret? Well, I love any television program or any book that's about a gang and an unlikely gang who come together and they've all got different skills. You know, and that's that's something I love. And my mum lives in in England in a retirement village, oh. and everyone there is over 70. And I went to visit um, her, and it's a really beautiful place. You know, the, you know what England can be like with the rolling green hills and the lakes and the trees. Uh, and when I was there, like any good crime fiction reader. I thought this would be an amazing place for a murder, uh, yeah. and as soon as I thought that, I thought actually this group of people who are all there uh, would solve that murder because there's so many people with so many different skills. Yeah. And so, yeah, I immediately thought if I had four people, a gang, and I wanted them to come from really different places, so having an ex-spy is really useful because Elizabeth can always call on all sorts of people from her past. Yeah, uh, a nurse, a psychiatrist is great, and a, and a trade union official who. If India is anything like、um, England, and I know it is in lots of ways, he, he, is, he will、is. argue with everyone at all times about everything. Yeah, yeah,、uh, yeah. And so suddenly, I had this lovely group of people, all of whom were looking for an adventure in their seventies, all of whom would never really have met if they weren't in this one community. And the、yep. Thursday Murder Club was born, and I wrote it、um, in secret, really, because, firstly, you don't really want to hear if your friends are writing a book, do you? Yeah, it's the worst think, thing in the world. If a, if a yeah, friend of、yeah. yours says, "Hey, I'm I'm writing a novel. Would you like to read some of it?" And yeah, you're like, yeah. "Oh no, oh no, please no."、Uh, yeah. And because over here in 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 the UK, because I'm quite well known, so I'm on television and I present quizzes. I didn't want publishers to sort of say, "Oh yeah, listen, whatever you write, we'll publish it." You know, whatever、right. it is. So I wanted to finish something for myself. Yeah. To really look people in the eyes and say, "Is this like a? Is this properly a good book? Is this a good mystery? Do you love these、Got、characters?"、It. Yeah.、Uh, and、um, so you know, when they did, it's, it's it's ever since then it's been a phenomenon, which is which is lovely. Great, great.、Um, moving on,、um, your second novel,、uh, which is "The Man Who Died Twice,"、um, mm-hmm. interestingly sold more than 114,000 copies in its first week. Um, mm. And、um, as per stats that I checked,、uh, only J.K. Rowling, Dan Brown, and Harper Lee sold that quickly. <laughs> so, how does that make you feel? Is it is there any kind of pressure that comes along with it? A little bit. I, I mean, it is ridiculous to, to yeah to have only、um, yeah <laughs> Harper Lee ahead of me. You think, okay, but because I come from television, and my my philosophy has always been, I try and make things that I'm really proud of. Yeah. And when I do that, I want as many people as possible to watch or to read. That's what I love. I'm not one of those authors who wants to sort of sit back and say, "Oh, look, you can read it if you want to. It's it's probably rubbish." Yeah, I'm really proud of the books, and I love the fact that people have enjoyed them and they love the characters. So to me, these numbers, I I, I really enjoy that side of the job. I enjoy selling. I enjoy going into bookshops and seeing them selling lots of books. I enjoy、yeah. book selling as an industry. You know, it, the booksellers of India and the UK do such an extraordinary job. At a, a bookshop in, in every town is such a wonderful thing. Got it. And to me, selling a load of books means the industry is doing well. I'm doing well. People are enjoying themselves. People are enjoying the characters. So I sort of, it, it doesn't put pressure on me in the same way I think it might other people, because I'm used to being in an industry where millions of people watch. And so having millions yeah, of people yeah. read is quite. To me, it feels quite normal. So you、terrible. have you already have had your fair share of pressure and everything. Yeah, I think so. I, I, I think over the years on TV, when you have shows that are successful or shows that are unsuccessful, I've, I've been through all of it. I've been through all of those emotions. And as I say, the absolute key is, I love the books. You know, I really, I'm proud of them. They're books that I would read. 
Yeah. And so the more people that read them, the happier I am. Okay. And uh, did the success of the first two books uh, add some pressure to the creative process? Like, did it change after the first book, or was it the same? Yeah, it's it's, it's interesting that funnily enough, I'd almost finished the second book by the time the first one came out. You know, publishing has such a long lead times. Yeah. So that wasn't so much pressure, but the third one, which I just finished now, um, yeah, I'm really thinking about because lots of people come up because. I'm recognizable. Lots of people come up and talk to me about the books yeah, yeah. and about the characters. So I get a lot of feedback, like a lot of feedback about what people like and what they want to see more of. Um, and so, yeah, while I'm writing, it's, it's, it's hard sometimes to keep those voices out of your head. I have to remember, I have to remember, I have to just sit in the room with the computer, keep my head down and remember it's just me and the characters and to try yeah. and write like I did in the first two. Um, yeah. You know, listen, it's lovely when people say lovely things, but you do, you're in the middle of a scene and you think, oh, didn't someone the other day say she likes it when Joyce yeah. does this? Maybe, yeah. maybe I should get to do that again, but you can't. You have to You have to let the characters um, be themselves, I think. And uh, did any weird criticism came to you by someone? No, I don't. I don't. Um, thing with, I, I never read reviews, good or bad. Yeah. Uh, because, because there's no point. You, you know, there's no... You know, if, if you believe the good ones, you have to believe the bad ones. So, you know, after years in TV, I tend not to look at them at all. You know, over the years, you you work out if your book is, you know, um, really connected with people. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, I don't, I don't look at, re I don't look at reviews. And it's, it helps um, you maintain I, your own sanity. Yeah, I, I, I think exactly that. I yeah. think it's, <laughs> it's, it's. Listen, I can see the temptation, but the trouble with any writer is you could have a hundred good reviews and one bad one. And the only one you'll ever remember is the bad one. So you, know, you, you might as well avoid all of them. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you have had a long career as a television presenter, mm. producer, comedian. Um, so I wanted to know that uh, what were some of the biggest learning curves in your early career? And what did you take from them? How did they help you in your writing? Yeah, it's a really good question. And I, I, I think there's one really simple one. Uh, and that is, I grew up watching television and reading books. At the end of that, that's that's what I did. I wasn't outside climbing trees and stuff. You know, I'm a, I'm, I'm I'm an inside kid. Yeah. Um, and when I started in television, there, there were quite a lot of people there who didn't really watch television, or certainly didn't watch the sort of television that they were supposed to be making, quizzes and entertainment shows. Uh, and my view has always been in TV and now in books. I just made the type of television program that I would watch. You know, and then I wasn't having to second guess or be cynical or think, what would people like? I just yeah. always thought, what would I like? Because I love television. And, you know, it served me really, really well over the years. And with books, it's the same thing. I think sometimes people can write books quite cynically. They think, oh, what, what would be successful? What would be a hit? You see sometimes yeah, people yeah. say, oh, I'm going to write a big thriller. I'm going to write a bestseller. And you can't. You can't do it. You have to write the book that comes from your heart. You know, you have to write the book that only you can write. And you yeah. have to write the book that you would love to read. And Pathetic. that is something that I came straight over from TV to writing. I, I, I understood absolutely only write the thing that you would read. So you are more focused on the process rather than the end result? Like you don't... Um, yeah, I, I, I think that... Uh, I mean, it's, it, it's interesting. The one, Another thing about TV is if you invent something... Uh, you want it to run forever. You want to do a second series and a third series and a fourth yeah, series and yeah. a fifth series. That, that's my business. But, you know, I, I, I was a businessman for years, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so without thinking about it, with the Thursday Murder Club, I knew that if I did it right, then I, they, they'd come back and do another book and another book yeah, and another yeah. book. You know, and um, so, you know, that's, that's lovely. So I, I think I don't even think about it. It's all subconscious, I think. That, that thing of I just want to entertain people. You know, yeah. I want people to turn the page, turn the page, finish the book and want to read the next one. You know, that, that's the thing that that's the thing that I love. That's the thing that I live for. Great. Um, and uh, Steven Spielberg has bought the rights to the Thursday Murder Club. Um, yeah. Have you had any conversations about the direction or are you relaxed, anxious or cynical about the adaptation? I'm completely relaxed. You know, another thing my career has taught me is that you've got to work in teams and you've got to work with people who are brilliant at what they do. So I'll take care of my bit, which is sitting down, you know, yeah. in this room that I'm in now, writing the books. Um, and when someone like Steven Spielberg wants to make a film, you have to let him. You, you can't, you, you can't ring Steven Spielberg. You can't be Jack of all trades. 
Yeah, exactly. You know, I can't yeah. bring Steven Spielberg and tell him how to make a film because the that's pathetic. what he's really good at. So I'm leaving yeah, them yeah. to it. Um, and um, you're also the creator of some extremely popular and long-lasting daytime TV shows. We all are aware of that. Um, and now two of your books are also tremendously admired. Um, so according to you, uh, what is that X factor that you have that others don't? Like, what is that one thing? Um, well, it's interesting, isn't it? Because there's a huge amount of people who are more talented than me who sell less yeah. books than me, right? Yeah. Because they, again, like I was saying, you write the book that you love, okay? And, you know, if you're, you know, there's loads of authors who write beautifully, but it's it's never going to cross over to a mainstream audience. You yeah. Know? And my, the only reason I sell, particularly, is I, I write the book I love, but I come from a mainstream sensibility. That's what I've always loved. That's who I am. So yeah. I'm not faking it. I'm not pretending. I'm not trying to be mainstream. I just am. And so if a literary novelist does their job well, I mean, really well, they can sell 100,000 copies of a book. If I do my job really well, I can yeah. sell a million. I can sell a million copies. You know, the job is the same, and yeah, yes, yeah. The, the skills are the same. But I, I, I have a bigger marketplace because my my heart is in yeah, the mainstream. Yeah. I, I always, I don't want there to be any obstacles for people reading these books. You know, I want everybody to be able to pick it up, and I think it's, you know, it, it, I think it would entertain anybody. It's the truth. You know, there's laughter, there's tears, there's a mystery at the heart of it. There's lovely characters. You know, there's nothing to stop somebody reading it. And that's just where my heart is. Yeah, and I want yeah. everyone to enjoy it. So it, it connects to the readers on an emotional level, not only on the intellectual level. Yeah, I think so. I think so. And and it, and it makes and, and it makes them laugh. I mean, they're, they're not comedy books, but in, and if someone can make you laugh and cry, uh, then, you know, you're going to read all the books, aren't you? Yeah. That's a nice thing to be able to do. Correct, correct. Um, and you mentioned about um, thinking of writing more and more series in the Thursday Murder Club. Mm. Um, so there are four Thursday Murder Club books planned. Um, yeah. Any plans after that? Have you thought about anything? Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm about to start writing the fourth Thursday Murder Club. Um, and I'm going to do more after. So pro probably not immediately afterwards. I think I'm going to do another series next. Um, you know, I'd really like to have uh, just a normal detective. Yeah, I'd like to have someone who can sit in an office and someone can knock on their door and say, here's a crime, here's a case for you, you know, because yeah. then it's easy to think of plots, you yeah. know, because you can do anything. Um, and I would like to write something a bit more, you know, thrillery, like a, like, like a Da Vinci Code type book. You know, I love that sort of thing. But, you know, always coming from the same place, always coming from heart and humour and warmth, you know, always those things. But it will be interesting to take the sort of, uh, you know the, the kind of writing style behind a Thursday Murder Club, and 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 put that onto a Da Vinci Code. I think might be a really interesting, um, very interesting, experiment. really interesting. Yeah. 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 Um, one thing that we all faced was the COVID nineteen and the pandemic mm -hmm. that followed. Um, so, did the pandemic change you as a writer or um, as an artist who has been in this field for quite a long time? Do you know? <laughs> I don't think it did. I think I, I think it just confirmed a few things I already thought, which is connection between human beings is very, very important. Yeah. Um, kindness is very, very important. Being a gang is very, very important. Um, and I think that we live in a world where we're constantly divided and we're constantly being told that you know we disagree with each other and it's you know us against them the whole time. Yeah. Uh, and I've never believed that. I've never believed that's who human beings are. And I think during the pandemic, we saw a huge amount of examples of kindness and cooperation and people looking after each other. Uh, and so I think that just confirmed the things that I already thought, which is whatever else happens in the world, I have one job and that's to show kindness and strength uh, can win the day, you know? And that's yeah. what I hope these, these, these books do. It reaffirmed your faith in yourself and humanity and other human emotions. Yeah. I mean, listen, here, here's the truth about COVID. Whatever your view of the world is, you, it could be reinforced by what happened during COVID. Yeah. Because it was so big and so many things happened yeah. that you yeah. can you can sort of attach anything to it. But I chose to attach, I tried to, you know, put some optimistic uh, things on it. Um, and your next book is scheduled to release in September 2022. Um, yeah. So what can readers expect from it? Uh, well, it's called The Bullet That Missed. Uh, and it's about um, it's about a television presenter, funnily enough. Okay. 
Yeah. Uh, but a, a television presenter of, of, of a local news program. So he's very famous in his local area, but no one knows him outside. Yeah. Uh, and it's a story about one of his co-presenters from many years ago disappeared. And, and he's always had suspicions that she was murdered. Uh, and the Thursday Murder Club get involved. And it's it's just the story of that investigation. So it's, it's really good fun. And I get to write about television as well, which, uh, which, which I really enjoy. I really look forward to it. Um, and um, um, one thing that I wanted to ask you is that you have also experimented with comedy. Um, hmm. So according to you, how important is humor in life and also literature? And we all know about the recent Oscar incident between Will Smith and Chris Rock. Um, so do you think that we are somewhere moving away from humor in life or in literature? Yeah, it's, 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 I mean, listen, I've, I've always sort of been in comedy um, in uh, in my TV career. You know, I've, I've always, you know, a, a joke is always the first thing I look for. Yeah. Um, and with the Thursday Murder Club, I really set out to not write a funny book. Because I think sometimes funny crime stories they take you away from the story a bit. Yeah, yeah. So I thought I thought do, don't write a single joke in here. But fortunately, the characters are, are funny. The characters make me laugh when I'm reading yeah, it. Yeah. So the humour comes from them. So there's no jokes in it. Um, yeah, listen, we'll never get away from humour because you know laughter is like love, isn't it? It's the same thing, and you know we always love to laugh. Yeah. And there's always there's always changes in comedy and how it's seen and how it's perceived. Uh, and you know we're going through one at the moment, and I think it's probably right. You know, this all this talk of cancel culture. I think, by and large, people just need to be more need to be respectful to other people. You, yeah. you know, it's cool. In comedy, we always call it reading the room, which is Got it. Who, the, the group of people you're in front of do jokes that they're going to like and are going to make them feel happy and included. And yeah. if someone is offended, they're allowed to be. You know, and you've got to listen. Just listen. You know, you might disagree with them. That's absolutely fine. But they're allowed. They're allowed to be offended. But no, I, I think comedy is very robust. Uh, and you know, because I mean, without laughter, you know, what are we? So basically, it all comes down to agree to disagree. That's it. Like maybe that's the essence of comedy. Yeah, kind of. Listen, you got to fight. You know, and I respect people who fight their court. You know, you have to fight. But I feel like if I can add anything to the world and, and, and to move it in a progressive direction, all I can do is sit in the middle and try and bring people across to my side. But we need people on the barricade still. We need fighters. We need shouters. Yeah. But, you know, we also need other people. Um, and Mr. Osborne, my last question. Um, how will you describe your literary journey till now? If you have to describe it in a sentence or a word, whichever you feel love. Yeah, uh, I, w- I would say uh, I, w- I would say I've been enormously lucky to to have this group of characters who I love writing and who people love reading, uh, and you know I want to write and write forever and ever now. You know, I had thirty years in TV, and if I spent the next thirty years writing books, I'd be very, very, very happy. Uh, thank you, Mr. Osborne, for your valuable time. I hope that I was able to do justice in interviewing you. I wish you all the very best for all your future products and thank oh, you very thank much you. for your time. Thank you so much.